there are very many people who do not comply with tax laws. If you don't comply with tax laws, what is going to happen? Are there any consequences? The answer is yes. There are consequences. And the consequences are tax compliance consequences. In this session, we are going to discuss about tax consequences. And these are the consequences when a taxpayer does not comply with tax laws. Tax laws are like any other laws in the country. And laws are to be obeyed. They are to be followed to the letter. And tax laws are not an exception. They are to be followed to the letter. Taxpayers are expected to comply with tax laws. And if they do not, they suffer consequences. When you look at the tax statutes or the tax acts, there are various actions that taxpayers are expected to take. For example, taxpayers are expected to file tax returns. The tax returns are also expected to be correct. In case a taxpayer does not file a tax return or they do not file a correct tax return, there are consequences. Taxpayers are also expected to remit tax money and limit the money on time. They must also limit the collect amount of money. In case they fail to do so, there are consequences. There are also actions that taxpayers are not expected to take, and this is in the tax acts. For example, taxpayers are expected to issue tax invoices in cases where they are registered for VAT. In case they fail to do so, there will be consequences. From this, we can conclude that there are several things or actions taxpayers are expected to take under the tax acts, and if they fail to take these particular actions, there will be consequences. There are also other things or actions taxpayers are not expected to take. And every time when they take those actions, there will be consequences. Because of the many things that taxpayers are expected to do, and very many things that taxpayers are not expected to do, there is a problem, and this problem is a tax non-compliance problem. Remember, the core business of every taxpayer is not tax. Taxpayers do not operate businesses so that they can pay tax. No. They have other goals and objectives of operating those specific businesses. However, because they operate in environments that require they must pay tax, then they have to comply with tax. Tax compliance is an added business responsibility. And the worst thing about this added business responsibility is that there is no direct payment for the taxpayer. However, the taxpayer enjoys the services that are provided using the tax money. Many taxpayers know that they are expected to comply with tax laws. And they also have an idea that in case they fail to comply with the tax laws, there are consequences. But if you ask most of the taxpayers the consequences of tax non-compliance, majority of them can only tell you two or three things. They can tell you about the penalties, they can tell you about the interest, they can tell you about the fines. But beyond that, they don't know what else can happen to them or their business. To illustrate this lack of knowledge about the consequences of tax non-compliance, let us look at the story of Kamau, Othiabo and Kimei, who are great friends. They agreed to start a real estate business in Nairobi and they went ahead and bought land in the slum areas and they started building houses. 
you know that in the slum areas, the houses that are built are low-cost houses. They planned the construction and they had a working policy. Any building or any house that they were putting up, the period from start to finish and full occupancy had to take a maximum of seven days. They agreed to build 300 rooms and each of them would take 100 looms at the end of the day. You know, the looms that are built in slum areas don't take a lot of time to construct. So they had this agreement that once they had constructed 300 rooms, they would sit down and divide the number of looms amongst themselves and each of them would take 100 lento looms. They were able to achieve their goal within one year. The three gentlemen are a good example of when you won't walk far, you walk with others. But when you want to walk faster, you walk alone. After they had achieved their goal, they agreed to have a meeting. And the meeting had two objectives. The first objective was to celebrate the achievement. And the second objective was to divide the number of houses amongst themselves. All of them turned up for the meeting and Kamau produced a letter. And this letter was from the tax authority. Apparently, the tax authority wanted them to provide tax records and tax documents. The tax authority wanted to establish whether they had been paying tax. They did not celebrate as they had expected and they agreed that before they divide up the number of houses, the first thing that they needed to do was to sort out the tax issue. After they provided the tax documents and tax records, the tax authority came up with tax for them to pay. They paid the principal tax and they were penalized. In addition, they were asked to pay interest, which they did. Kamau, Odiambo, and Kime had not complied with the tax laws. And because of that, they could not celebrate their achievements. Equally, they were not able to divide the houses so that each can go their separate ways. This case is a good example of some of the consequences that taxpayers face when they do not follow tax laws. After listening to the story of Kamau, Odiambo, and Kime, it is time for us to ask ourselves, what are the specific consequences of tax land compliance? Maybe you have a question, why are we talking about the consequences of tax land compliance? There are very many reasons why you need to know the consequences of tax land compliance. However, we can quickly touch on three reasons. The first reason is that tax non-compliance is expensive. It is costly. And this is in terms of time and the money to resolve the issues. Most of the tax non-compliance issues are not resolved in a day. It's going to take a week, a month. Sometimes it can even take a year. And that is going to cost you. The second reason is <coughs> the second <coughs> the second reason is the effects on the business owner. Tax non-compliance affects business owners, and most of them have lived to relate it. So it is very important to talk about tax non-compliance because we are aware there are some taxpayers or business owners who do not comply because they don't know what they're supposed to do, and they also do not know when they're supposed to be complying with tax laws. The third reason is the effect on the business itself. Tax non-compliance has brought down businesses, and it does not matter how big your business is. 
and that is big in terms of turnover. There is no business that cannot be brought down because of tax non-compliance. So for these three reasons, it is very important that we discuss the issue of tax non-compliance consequences. If you know about a consequence, you are better placed than someone who does not know about those consequences. Now we know the reasons why we need to talk about tax non-compliance consequences. The question is, what next? Before we discuss what we have for this session, take a few minutes and light at least 20 consequences of tax non-compliance. There are very many consequences that taxpayers face, but for purposes of this session, we are going to look at 13 consequences. This does not mean that these are the only consequences. No, there are very many other consequences. Before we discuss what I have, take a few minutes and light down at least 20 consequences of tax non-compliance. Just take the time and light down. And once we go through the 13 consequences that I have, You can check those consequences against the consequences that you have. What are the 13 consequences? The first consequence is fines. And this is especially in cases where taxpayers fail to file tax returns. In most of the tax systems, taxpayers are expected to file tax returns. And the tax returns are filed periodically. For example, for value-added tax, a taxpayer is expected to file a return for one month. When you're talking about income tax, a taxpayer is expected to file a tax return for one year of income. For example, if you fail to file VAT returns, the fine is Kenya shillings 10,000. That is a standard amount, irrespective of the size of your business. The second consequence is penalties. Penalties are because you have failed to comply with tax laws. For example, you fail to lend it tax money on time. When this happens, you are going to be penalized. And penalties are normally a one-off amount. Currently, if you fail to limit tax on time, the penalty is 5%. It is important for you to note that this figure may change in the future. The penalty amount remains the same irrespective of the number of days that you have failed to limit the tax money. It is important to note that this is the general penalty. There are very many other penalties. I think there are more than 10 other penalties as far as tax laws are concerned. In another session, we are going to talk about the penalties. But for purposes of this session, we are only going to talk about the general penalty. The third consequence is tax interest. A tax interest is charged on a monthly basis. And the tax interest is levied on the tax, that is the principal tax, plus penalty. For example, if the principal assessed tax to pay is 100,000 and penalty is at 5%, which makes the penalty 5,000, 
the total amount on which the interest is levied is the 100,000 plus the 5,000. That is 105,000. It is important to note that interest is on a monthly basis and interest is levied per month or part of the month. What does this mean? It is simple. If the money is laid by one day or by 30 days within the same month, the interest is going to be at the same rate. Currently, the rate of interest is at 1% and this is simple interest. However, it is important to note that this may change. The fourth consequence is prosecution in a court of law. When we look at all the tax acts, they provide for prosecution. And you're going to be prosecuted because of various activities, and the activities are listed in the tax laws. Always remember that tax is a debt to the state. This makes debt a civil debt. However, you are going to be prosecuted, not because of the debt, but because of the activities that you will have engaged in. You can be prosecuted for criminal activities. A good example is when the tax authority decides to treat what you have been engaged in as tax evasion. Remember that tax evasion is a criminal activity and you're going to be prosecuted. This has happened in the past, it is happening today, and it is also going to happen in the future. So the best thing that you can do is to comply with the tax law. You are going to save yourself from a lot of embarrassing situations. The fifth consequence is jail time. Yes, you can spend time in jail because of not complying with tax laws. It does not matter whether it is one day, two days, one week, one month, one year, or whatever time. When you are prosecuted, you face very high chances of spending time in jail, and especially when it comes to tax evasion. Whatever you engage yourself in, the tax authority or tax services can interpret that as tax evasion. And if it is proven that you engaged in tax evasion, there are chances that you may spend some time in jail. Consequence number six is travel prohibition. In the Tax Act, specifically the Tax Procedures Act, there is a provision for departure prohibition order. And this means that once you are served with a departure prohibition order, you cannot be able to leave this country until you are cleared by the tax authority or the tax services. And this is normally issued in cases where there is tax evasion or there is a pending tax bill and the taxpayer is not paying the tax debt. However, if you are able to pay your tax debts or make arrangements with the tax authority or the tax services, then you will be able to leave the country. But if you attempt to leave the country, you are going to be arrested at the airport. You can't imagine how embarrassing it is. You have planned to travel out of the country. Maybe you even have your family accompanying you and you are told you cannot leave the country. Why? Because of tax liabilities. And where do those tax liabilities originate from? Tax non-compliance. Consequence number seven is business closure. In case you are not complying with tax laws, the tax authority or tax services can decide to close your business. Many taxpayers have found themselves in situations where their businesses were closed. Officers from the tax authority appeared with padlocks and closed the businesses. And why was this done? This was done because the taxpayer was not complying 
with tax laws. There are some businesses we knew about. We used to hear about those businesses, but they are no more. What happened? The government closed the businesses. So in case you are not complying with tax laws, you face the possibility of your business being closed down by the tax authority or the tax services. And once your business has been closed down, there is nothing you can do about it. Even if you go to court and the court allows you to open the business, the tax authority will, in most cases, refuse to open your business. They'll come up with other charges. Once your business has been closed, that is a deal done. There is nothing else you can do. Consequence number eight is about assets. Sometimes when you are not complying with tax laws and you happen to have a tax liability that you are not paying, your assets are going to be taken away by the tax authority. We have said that tax is a debt to the state and a debt has to be recovered. So the tax authority or tax services will send auctioneers to come and recover the debt. And if you don't have money to pay the debt, then the auctioneers are going to take away your assets, including your machines, stocks, furniture, vehicles, anything they can lay their hearts on, basically almost all your assets. What is going to happen? You will not have a business and you will not have assets. And the worst thing about this is that once the assets are sold by the auctioneers and the money that the auctioneers are going to collect is not adequate to cover for your tax debts, you are still going to be left with a debt to pay. So the minute your assets are taken, your business is gone, your assets are gone, and you're going to have a tax liability. And why is this going to happen to you? Because you are not tax compliant. So if you want to save yourself from this kind of agony, ensure that you are complying with tax laws. Consequence number nine, tax audits target. There are taxpayers who are audited frequently. There are other taxpayers who have never been audited. The minute you are identified as a taxpayer who is tax non-compliant, you become a target of tax audits. Every time the officers want to conduct a tax audit, the first person they remember is you. We know that tax audits are very disruptive because your business does not exist for tax purposes. You have other goals and other objectives. But when you're going through a tax audit, in most cases, there is hardly anything else that you can be able to do, unless, of course, you hire an expert to handle the audit on your behalf. But remember, this is not free. It comes at a cost. So if you don't want to be a target of tax audits, ensure that you are complying with tax laws. Consequence number 10 is blocking of the PIN. That is your personal identification number. You know that there is hardly anything you can do without a personal identification number as far as tax issues are concerned. For example, you may need to get a tax compliance certificate for purposes of your business. When your PIN is blocked, you cannot be able to do anything in ITAX. You have actually been removed as a taxpayer. PIN is not only used for tax purposes. PIN is also used for many other purposes. For example, opening a bank account, opening an account for electricity purposes, and in very many other places. So when your PIN has been blocked, you have actually been grounded. You are not able to operate as a taxpayer. And you know that 
when you're not able to operate as a taxpayer, there are consequences because of that. Blocking of the pin tends to be a temporary measure. It is not a permanent measure. And it is done especially in cases where taxpayers are not compliant. The intention of blocking the pin is to sort out a certain pending issue. You have not been removed permanently as a taxpayer. It is just a temporary measure. And once you sort out the issue, you are going to be put back. The worst thing about pin blocking is that once the pin is blocked, you are blocked from all tax systems. You may not be tax compliant as far as value added tax is concerned. Your pin is going to be blocked because you are not compliant. But this is going to affect all other tax systems that you have been registered for. For example, domestic excess duty. In case your pin is blocked because of value added tax, you cannot be able to transact any other business where your pin is required, including other tax systems. You can also not be able to import anything using your PIN. Consequence number 11 is deregistration. The minute you are identified as a taxpayer who is not tax compliant, the tax authority or the tax services can deregister you. And you are going to be deregistered from all tax systems. This is because if you are not tax compliant in one tax system, chances are that you are also not compliant in no other tax systems. Consequence number 12, this is reputational damage. This is not a direct consequence of tax non-compliance. However, it is going to affect you and affect your business. When people get to know that you are not tax compliant, your reputation may be damaged. And it is not only your reputation as a business owner, but also the reputation of your business. When your reputation is damaged, people may not trust you. When people do not trust you, they may not be willing to do business with you. Just imagine a situation where everybody in town is aware about your tax non-compliance issues. We tend to treat tax compliance as something very personal. But the minute you are outed as a non-tax compliant person, that is going to affect your reputation. Consequence number 13 is business loss. The time that you are going to spend dealing with other consequences of tax non-compliance is going to affect your concentration and focus on your business. And when that happens, chances are that your business is going to be negatively affected. And when your business is negatively affected, then there is going to be business loss. One of the things that we have observed in the market, when a business is dealing with problems of tax non-compliance, basically all other operations are affected. And many of those businesses end up going down. I know many people think that tax cannot bring their businesses down. But tax, and especially when it comes to non-compliance issues, can bring your business down. Probably someone is asking, what is the effect? Remember that every time when you're dealing with tax problems, your focus is no longer on your business, but your focus is on the tax problem. And most of the tax problems, you actually do not know when you're going to resolve the problem. There's that uncertainty. And for the time that you're sorting out the tax problem, you are going to be uncertain about when you are going to resolve that problem. You are going to spend a lot of time and most likely you are going to lose focus on your business. 
and that is what brings the business down. Even though you may not hit the lock bottom, but you are going to be affected to a certain extent. Remember, even if it's 10% or 20% or 30% or whatever percentage, that your business will come down. That is going to have an effect on your bottom line. And remember, the bottom line is your profitability. Consequence number 13 is business loss. Every time when you're dealing with tax problems that are from tax and compliance, you are most likely going to lose business. And you're going to lose business because of two things. Number one is because of your focus on business. When you are not focusing on your business fully, you are going to lose business. The other reason why you're, the other reason why you may lose business is especially in cases where your business partners get to know that you are not complying with taxes. No business partner wants to deal with a business that is not complying with tax because at the end of the day, they too are going to be affected by your actions or inactions. And most of them will prefer to deal with other businesses. Today, we are observing a new trend in the market where private companies are asking for tax compliance certificate. If you want to do business with them, they will require you to have a tax compliance certificate. If one of your customers or your clients is asking for your tax compliance certificate and you cannot be able to get that, they are of course not going to continue doing business with you. They will go out there and look for other people that they can do business with. There are very many other businesses that are out there and those businesses are your competitors and they are ready and willing to take your customers or your clients. It is therefore very important for you to comply with taxes because once you comply with taxes, your business sustainability is assured. Those are the 13 consequences of tax non-compliance. Remember, before we started discussing about those 13 consequences, I had asked you to come up with a list of at least 20 consequences. And what you need to do is compare what we have discussed with what you had listed down. In case what we have discussed is in your list, that is okay. And if what we have discussed is not in your list, you can always add our list to your list. This is not the end of discussing about tax consequences. It is important to remember that the tax industry is a very dynamic industry. Things change every single day. What is relevant today may not be relevant tomorrow. So what you need to do is to keep up to date with what is happening in the tax industry. Now that you know about the consequences of tax non-compliance, what next? It is not enough for you to know or to learn about the consequences of tax non-compliance. You must take action. And what is it that you need to do? There are very many things that you can do now that you have the information about consequences of avoiding tax. As human beings, it is recommended that we occasionally visit a doctor for a health check. Equally, it is important for you to conduct a health check on your business. And this is recommended for every taxpayer. In this particular case, what we recommend is a tax health check. What is the indication of a healthy tax situation? The indication is your compliance. You need to ask yourself, are you complying with all the taxes that you are expected to be complying with? Are you following the tax laws? Are you filing your tax returns? Are you paying the tax on time? Once you conduct a tax health check, there are three outcomes that you most likely will come up with. Number one, there are some tax systems that you are expected to register 
for, but you have not registered. Number two, you have not been following the tax laws and therefore you have not complied with tax laws. Number three, you are expected to have deregistered, but you have not deregistered. After you complete the tax health check, you need to take the next step, and that is step number two. If you are expected to register for a certain tax system and you have not done it, you go ahead and register. In case through the tax health check, you discover that there is tax that you have not paid, what you need to do is to approach the tax authority or the tax services. In case you don't have money to pay all the taxes, you can always propose a payment plan. And in case you discover that there are certain tax systems that you no longer qualify to be registered for, what you need to do is you need to apply to be registered. For example, if you are VAT registered, but your turnover is below the registration threshold, then you need to apply to be registered because if you don't do that, you are going to be penalized. We have come to the end of this session and we have been discussing about the consequences of tax non-compliance. What are the take-homes? Number one, taxpayers are expected to comply with tax laws and failure has consequences. Number two, many taxpayers are aware about some of the consequences, but they may not be aware of most of the consequences. And that is why we have discussed 13 consequences. Number three, what is the way forward? The way forward is to conduct a tax health check to establish any issues of tax non-compliance. And number four is to take action, to be proactive and take collective measures for tax non-compliance. That is all for today. It is my hope and trust that you have learned something. And as we always say in this channel, it is not enough to listen to what we are saying you need to take action. Before you leave, go to the comment section and tell us about any other consequences of tax non-compliance. In case you want to be guided on how to conduct a tax health check, you can always get in touch with us. That is one of the services that we offer. The link is in the description. If you want to learn more about tax compliance, check out our video on tax compliance. And in case you want to learn more about tax, you can always visit our website. The link is in the description. Your presenter today has been Dr. Wakabuyu Babeke. Till next time, stay tuned. Bye.